Hi, and welcome to the Google Message Discovery for Education webinar. Over the course of the next few minutes, we'll address uh, the questions that you might have around uh, archiving, uh, particularly as archiving is becoming a more and more compelling uh, requirement. States continue to roll out additional regulations, uh, with some of them including retention times as long as seven years. That's going to put an enormous pressure on educational institutions with limited budgets to find ways of retaining records and making them available uh, in a cost-effective and um, uh, low overhead manner. So Google, uh, not surprisingly, has risen to the occasion by providing you with a solution uh, influenced in large part by its broad experience with education. Google Apps uh, currently has uh, somewhere around 10 million active user accounts. And uh, because we feel so strongly that you should be informed and that you should have uh, these resources at your disposal, uh, we'd like to make sure that you know uh, now, uh, as you're getting ready for um, the planning and the deployment of next year's infrastructure, uh, what benefits you can obtain by using Google Message Discovery. We find that the records retention and compliance requirements uh, will in some cases apply to uh, students, in some cases not. Uh, in other cases they might apply to students, faculty, and staff. In any event, it's safe to say that each of those different uh, user groups will require different levels of access. Traditionally, system administrators have had to bear the brunt of the burden of providing access to historical emails. So what I'll do is describe and illustrate some of the ways in which you can make access uh, limited to only those staff that require it without necessarily having to make them system administrators. And so with this service, you'll now be able to look forward to being out of the business of having to uh, respond to emergency uh, records requests. Google Message Discovery is a service that was developed a number of years ago and is primarily uh, comprised of uh, three important sets of features. First of all, it's a hosted mail archive. In other words, you as a customer do not need to build the infrastructure to retain uh, these emails, nor do you have to do any of the performance tuning, the maintenance, the uh, upgrading, etc. All of that is uh, handled by our operations staff. And as a result of not having to build and construct and design the infrastructure, you'll also notice that it's very, very quick to deploy. In fact, in many instances, you can have the service in place in less than half an hour. Search and discovery tools are then overlaid on top of that infrastructure to provide you with an interface that lets you search, uh, put messages on hold. Those are two uh, crucial functions. You can also extract the messages to some external file if you needed to hand the emails over to uh, uh, an HR representative or the registrar's office or a compliance officer, uh, etc., legal counsel, what have you. And most importantly, you can have, as a result of the different roles and the different levels of access, you can have different levels of uh, visibility. So if necessary, you could even make one level available to outside auditors, and I'll show you some examples of how that can be done. And finally, all of this uh, security framework is uh, wrapped up inside of the Postini-based uh, email security environment, uh, which has been in, uh, available to the public for uh, 11 years now. It's a, it's a very well-known and proven technology. And as a result, you also benefit from uh, many of the policy management and delegated administration features, which in fact, some of you may already be familiar with from your prior use of the core Google Message Security uh, powered by Postini technology. So in the Google Message Discovery service, you can first of all manage your investigations by associating commonly used queries and result sets with a particular investigation or project name. So you could easily think of them as projects or folders. You can also design the investigations in such a way that particular investigators might be uh, owners of an investigation 
and thereby associating investigations with one particular investigator and, and not uh, all of them in general. There's no limit to the number of investigations that you can um, conduct, and more importantly, you can deploy those responsibilities, uh, those privileges, if you will, to the staff who are primarily interested in the information without making them system administrators in your environment. In addition, you can also further limit the scope of investigators in the event that, say, uh, a particular investigator might only be able to access the messages for, say, the staff and not the faculty. Now, independently of the, um, uh, of the investigation activity, you can also have auditors. So while, in this case, an investigator can search the contents of the database and extract messages and review them, an auditor would only be able to look at the activity of the report rather than have direct access to the data. When an investigator retrieves result sets, they can associate them with a hold date. So it's very often the case you'll be asked to produce records over whatever date range or however many uh, email addresses. When you've got your results and they're, uh, they, they meet your requirements, you can then set them aside by placing them on hold. That will then override any expiration dates which might otherwise apply. Moreover, the investigators can uh, review the messages interactively. They can also export them to a uh, file uh, in either PST or uh, MBOX. So that gives them the, both the flexibility of being able to assure themselves that they have the results that they, that they intend to have, and the flexibility and the um, portability of being able to extract those messages and then transfer them to either another application or another authorized party. In the case of very large files, for example, you can have the system automatically fragment those jobs into smaller segments. And, of course, you can password protect them if you want an additional level of security so that while they're in transit, they uh, cannot be uh, compromised. The audit reports, incidentally, will essentially uh, track all access. In other words, not just the reading of individual messages, but also the searching. Uh, it'll show the search criteria in the event that an investigator purges information or puts stuff on hold or exports. Those events are also tracked. So a uh, person in a supervisory role can assure themselves that the only behavior that's taking place is in fact the authorized behavior. And now let's take a moment to see the product in action. Now we're taking a look at the Google Message Discovery interface. For those of you who may have some prior Postini administration experience, this will be a very familiar screen. More importantly, for those of you who are new to Postini, it's important for you to understand that because of the segregation of responsibilities and because of the different roles, a particular user, when they log in, will be presented with the screen appropriate for their role. So, for example, as a system administrator, you can access all of your various server-level policies and you can make adjustments to things like uh, IP blocking and TLS, etc. All sorts of technical configuration options which would not be relevant to the typical HR or legal uh, consultant who might need to do an investigation. So, the extent of your involvement is really nothing more complicated than determining which of the organizations in this example here we have many organizations most educational institutions are likely to have two or three so in the case of uh, your organization you can decide which users should have the service turned on and it's then simply a matter of going down to archiving and activating the service and of course choosing the default retention policy, which in, is specified in terms of months. Now let's take a look at a different role. For the sake of convenience, this particular account has been modified so that I, I can access all of the various roles without having to log out and log back in. 
So in this instance, I'm now assuming the role of an administrator. Administrators can select uh, different criteria. They can choose among date ranges, keyword uh, keywords either in uh, the, the message body or specifically in the subject uh, line or the names of files, etc. You can also choose whether you want uh, to look at only inbound messages or outbound messages, etc. And of course, as you can see, this does not require any particular technical knowledge or any particular technical experience. In fact, it's safe to say that anyone who's ever used a webmail client or has ever perhaps purchased anything online will be very familiar with the fundamentals of these objects. Investigators are likely to uh, produce various uh, result sets as a result of their queries. Uh, they can also store these queries, incidentally, and name them. Uh, particularly useful if they're repetitively uh, iterating the same search. In this illustration, we can see the contents of a particular investigation and particularly all of the stored results that have been set aside. I'd like to draw your attention to this particular column here in the middle, which is the hold date. It's crucial that any compliance or discovery application provide you with the opportunity to easily override the expiration dates of messages by placing them on hold. You can specify a particular hold date or you can specify an open-ended hold in the event that you're not entirely sure when those messages should be expired or purged. In the event of a result set that you want to export, you can go ahead and uh, review the messages to make sure that in fact you're working with the data set that you'd like to ex export and then it's simply a matter of selecting that option from the pop-down menu here at the top of the screen. When you export messages you can choose to uh, you can choose the format that you would like you can choose the um, for example PST files incidentally are commonly used in a Windows uh, exchange oriented environment MBOX is the traditional uh, text-based uh, mail format which is uh, common in open source uh, uh, mail servers as well as open source clients like Thunderbird uh, and so you can name the job uh, you can password protect it if you want to make sure that the message is not uh, compromised or tampered with in transit. Uh, you know, in other words, after you burn it to a DVD. And in the event, this is a very important option, in the event that the result set were very large, you could have the service automatically fragment the job into uh, smaller uh, zip files, which you can then reassemble uh, at your destination's um, uh, application. Once you export these files, you'll see that uh, you can set them aside in the event that you need to download them. If there's a problem with your download, you can easily access them again. Uh, they'll be queued for you and held as a courtesy uh, for uh, a week. And uh, uh, most importantly, you can easily um, limit the ability for uh, investigators to have um, access within uh, a particular um, uh, organization. You can limit them to uh, groups of users. So uh, if in general administrators may be responsible for reviewing the uh, messages of students and faculty, there may be some set, perhaps a contractor uh, or uh, some uh, outside investigator who might need to come in and you would like to then constrain their access to only uh, those users who are uh, uh, subject to that particular investigation. Now, let's transition to a different role. The auditor role can be completely separate from investigators. This gives you the benefit of being able to have an external party uh, or perhaps a supervisor come in and review all of the activity that has taken place for a particular archive. Keep in mind that this particular role 
does not have the ability to perform searches or queries. The only access that they have is to the summaries of the activity that has taken place. So the service provides you the flexibility of establishing that as a separate responsibility. And when you review the activity, not only can you see the type of event that took place, but also some metadata around that to help you better understand the context of that uh, activity. Um, in, this, in, this, in these illustrations, you can see, for example, that in the event of a search, we display the search criteria and the date range. W in the event of an access, in other words, where someone has actually reviewed uh, the contents of a particular message, we'll display uh, some additional information about that message, and you can even move sideways, if you will, through the activity by looking at all of the other investigators who may have looked at that particular message. So this gives you a very comprehensive supervisory role. So in conclusion, I'd simply like to remind you that the four fundamental roles are the individual end user, who can of course search the messages that they personally have sent and received, the system administrator, typically the IT person who would configure the service and determine uh, which users or which organizations should receive that particular service, the investigator, in other words the person who's tasked with querying the archive and producing the uh, messages and if necessary exporting them to an external file and finally the auditor who can then come in and supervise the activity that has taken place in the archive. So I hope that you've had an opportunity through this illustration to understand both how comprehensive the service is and more importantly how simple it is for you to grant access to data to the appropriate staff members without having to expose them to any uh, technical complexity or any resources which they may not be qualified to have access to. Thank you very much.